Hey, welcome back. We finally got done fireforming all the brass for the 6.5 Creedmoor. And as a result, it's now time to size it all. The first thing I do for any sizing process is anneal the brass. Now, in order to get the setting for the amp annealer, I have to sacrifice a case. We're going to melt this sucker down just like this. I call it an Aztec sacrifice. Either way, I get a setting from the machine, take my label maker, make a label to go on top of the machine so I always have that number easily available to me and go to work. Annealing 300 cases takes a little while. I'm not going to make you sit through it. So let's go to the next step. The next step is full length sizing. I've told you in a previous video that I use competition shell holders to control my sizing process. We're going to do the same thing here. As a matter of fact, that same set of competition shell holders does my 284, my 308, my 6 Dasher, and now the 65 Creedmoor. The die we're using is a simple Redding Type S bushing die with a 289 bushing in it. I'm using a little tighter than normal bushing for this because I want to expand with a mandrel in the end to get the inside diameter that I want for the case. Rather than trying to get all the necks the same thickness, we're just going to set the interior diameter to what we want and not have to do quite so much work on our brass. To start my sizing process, I have to figure out the setting. Now, I've talked previously about not measuring your cases and trying to bump them back because that's fraught with peril. Instead, we're going to use the rifle itself as a measuring tool. But we have to prep the rifle to measure this stuff, and that means we have to disassemble the bolt. This is for a Remington 700 bolt, or in this case, an impact action. If you're running something with a mechanical ejector, you don't have to do quite so much disassembly. Something like a Kelblaze TG ejector doesn't have to be removed at all. For this particular bolt, all we're going to do is tap the roll pin out that retains the ejector. That takes a couple of tools and a little bit of time to do. Once you get good at this, it's very quick and easy. Honestly, trying to do it in front of the camera is harder than it should be because I'm having to reach around the camera to swing the hammer. Speaking of hammers, don't use a big hammer for this and certainly don't use a big steel hammer for this. A little bitty hammer like this is more than enough to get the job done. This one came from some cheap gunsmithing set on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description if I can find it again. Likewise, this bench block came in that same set and is barely usable for this, but it does work, so we're going to use it. Now, that gunsmithing set doesn't have a roll pin punch the right size for this particular application. You need a 560 force to do it really the easy way. You can do it with a 16th inch, but it's a little scary because you might drive the roll pin punch down inside the roll pin, swaging it in there so tight that you will almost never get it out. So using the 560 force is probably a better bet. From there, all we have to do is take the firing assembly out, you know, the striker. That takes this special tool, which you can buy many different variations of. This one's from Sinclair, and honestly, I don't like it very much, but it does work. Now with the bolt all the way stripped, it's time to go put it back in the rifle and make sure that that rifle is functioning cleanly and smoothly because we don't want any drag on the bolt as the bolt is falling because we're using that to measure whether anything is touching inside the chamber. Pushing the bolt in, it just falls closed. And that means that everything is nice and clear and working just fine. By the way, if you have friction for some reason, do check your front bedding screw to make sure it isn't too long and impinging on the head of the bolt. If you get that going on, it will affect not only this test, but the accuracy of the rifle as well. We're going to lube the cases with Dillon spray lube. Just throw them in a Ziploc bag, give them spray, shake them up real good, and then pour them out in a bin and let the lube flash off. First piece of brass, we are going to size with a 10 thousandths shell holder, the longest one, so we get the longest brass possible. The goal here is to sneak up on our actual setting to the best of our abilities. Now, this may not make it touch inside the chamber because remember, that brass had to come out of the chamber, so it can't be any longer than the chamber is. Now, squeezing the sides in can extend the brass a little bit, but these Redding sizing dies, when combined with competition match-based reamers, tend to be a pretty good fit, so you're not going to extend the brass very much while sizing. If you had a lot of clearance to begin with, you aren't going to see any change. You may have to wait till the second firing to do this. We're going to put the brass case into the chamber, and we're going to push the bolt up. The bolt handle should fall closed like this. Now that we've done that, we're going to pull that case back out and, and apply a piece of scotch tape to the head of the case. This is going to add two thousandths to the overall length from the shoulder to the case head. Trim it up with a nice sharp knife like this X-Acto and put it back in the chamber. When you push it forward, you're going to find out how much clearance you did or didn't have. In this case, I didn't have much at all. I probably only had half a thousandths to maybe a thousandths total clearance. 
I wouldn't have known that if I didn't use the tape. We're gonna go back to the press and put an 8 thousandths shell holder in it. Now with this new sized case, we're gonna do this again. Put in the chamber and the bolt falls closed. Put a single piece of tape on the head and the bolt falls closed, but you notice it falls just a little slower. It's maybe touching on the bolt face ever so slightly. Pull it back out and put another piece of tape on it. Trim that up, put it in the chamber, and the bolt doesn't even start to close. This is good. This shows us that we are somewhere between two and three thousandths total clearance in the chamber. That's the goal of the whole exercise, to get that dimension. Now we go measure that case. With four thousandths of tape on it, it measures one five three five. And when I take the tape off, it measures one five three one. In other words, I had four thousandths of tape on the case head. But we aren't done with the brass yet. We still have to do the rest of the operations. The next one is sizing all of the brass. With that eight thousandths shell holder in, we're going to size every piece of brass we have, including the one we started with, to push that one back an additional two thousandths. From there, all we have to do is trim the brass. I use a Duro trimmer because it's very fast and very easy, and it chamfers inside and out in a very consistent way, which is a big time saver for me, but I have a little hint for that particular trimmer. If you're using a Giro trimmer, do yourself a favor. Go buy some locking jam nuts for reloading dies and use them on your shell holders. Once you get them set, you can spin it in with your fingers, tighten it finger tight and go. And every single time you do your trimming operation, you get the same depth. So now we have brass that's been full length sized and trimmed. And the last step for me is to expand it again with a 262 expander. This one's titanium nitride coated simply because I couldn't find a plain one. And I have trimmed the end now, so I quit banging the mouths of cases with it because having a nice ball end just really saves you if you don't get the case perfectly into the shell holder. From there, it's just a matter of getting the lube off. I choose to do that with corncob media in a vibratory case cleaner. And now with all of the cases fire formed and sized to consistent dimensions, we can start doing the really important work of load development. But that's the next video. Until next time, shoot straight. Leave me a note if you still have questions about this particular process. And I'll see you in the next video.